All right, so SpaceX's Starship spacecraft isn't going to be able to make it all the way to the moon, never mind Mars, all by itself. To get into orbit and then continue on its journey, each Mars or moon-bound Starship is going to have to meet up in orbit with its brethren in order to fuel up for the journey beyond Earth. This is a mission that has never been attempted in the history of space exploration. But SpaceX's orbital refueling method for Starship is not only groundbreaking, but also astonishing to the entire scientific and technological world. All will be revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before we get into the meat of today's content, we want to tell you, first of all, thank you so much for watching this channel these last three years. Right now, we're getting very close to the 100,000 sub mark. But to achieve this, we humbly ask for your help. If you're watching these videos every day, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And that way you'll never miss out on any of our exciting content. And it also gives you the motivation to keep creating these videos for you to watch every day. All right, space lovers. Let's continue. The most important fundamental design goal of Starship is full and rapid reusability, propellant being the only thing intentionally expended during launches. However, the overarching purpose of Starship is to support SpaceX's founding goal of making humanity multiplanetary and building a self-sustaining city on Mars. And to achieve this monumental feat soon, SpaceX must first undertake NASA's mission to the moon. So the company will not only have to build the most easily and rapidly reusable rocket and spacecraft in history, but it also needs to master orbital refueling. Besides the processes of launching and landing rockets, to achieve in-space refueling, Starship needs to meet three critical and essential conditions. Docking in space, maintaining propellant at cryogenic temperatures, and transferring the fuel between spacecraft. Each of these challenges must be overcome to ensure the success of long-duration missions beyond Earth orbit. First is docking. This is perhaps the most straightforward of these challenges, given SpaceX's extensive experience with docking operations at the ISS. Starship's refueling operations will involve docking two massive spacecraft in orbit, one acting as the tanker and the other as the depot or mission vehicle. While Starship is larger than current spacecraft, the docking process benefits from the fact that SpaceX controls both vehicles, allowing for precise alignment and engagement systems. SpaceX's history of successfully docking cargo and crew vehicles to the ISS provides a solid foundation for these operations. Next is propellant cooling. This presents a more intricate challenge, particularly due to the cryogenic nature of the fuels involved. Starship uses liquid oxygen and liquid methane, which need to be kept at extremely low temperatures, 90.2 Kelvin for LOX and 112 Kelvin for methane. Maintaining these temperatures in the vacuum of space where heat can't easily dissipate is difficult. The risk is that without proper cooling, the propellant could boil off, reducing the mission's fuel supply. To address this, SpaceX is exploring passive cooling techniques, such as specialized surface coatings and controlled spacecraft orientation to minimize solar heating. Additionally, NASA's research into cryogenic fluid management, including the use of cryocoolers, provides valuable insights. Cryocoolers are advanced refrigeration systems that can prevent boil-off by maintaining the propellant at stable, ultra-cold temperatures as demonstrated in applications like MRI machines and space missions. Finally, propellant transfer in microgravity is another hurdle. On Earth, gravity naturally separates liquid from gas in a tank, but in space without gravity, propellants tend to float freely, and that makes transfer difficult. To address this, techniques like ullage thrusters are used. These small thrusters create a slight acceleration, pushing the liquid fuel to the bottom of the tank so it can get pumped out effectively. Another proposed method involves cooling the receiving tank so that the pressure difference forces the propellant from one tank to another, a technique NASA has successfully tested in ground-based experiments and partially in space with missions like the Robotic Refueling Mission, RRM-3. NASA's historical and ongoing research into cryogenic propellant management underpins some of the current understanding of these technologies. The RRM-3 mission, flown to the ISS back in 2018, successfully demonstrated long-term cryogen storage. Although a hardware failure prevented the demonstration of in-orbit methane transfer, despite this, the mission validated key concepts needed for orbital refueling, such as zero boil-off storage, and that shows that with continued development, these technologies are going to be viable for future missions. Overall, the technical challenges of orbital refueling are formidable, but not insurmountable. With SpaceX's approach, their rockets can leverage proven techniques while also advancing the level of sophistication in space operations. However, there are still many questions regarding the number of tanker flights needed for the SpaceX Starship missions, with estimates ranging from as few as five flights to as many as 20 or more. 
This variation stems from several factors, including the payload capacity of each tanker, the mass of the lunar starship, and the specific mission requirements, such as the amount of cargo being delivered to the moon or left behind on the lunar surface. While the exact number remains uncertain, what is clear is that the success of this approach hinges on SpaceX's ability to conduct these flights efficiently and reliably. In scenarios where only five tanker flights are needed, the refueling process appears straightforward and manageable, even with current technologies. This lower number assumes high efficiency in both payload delivery and propellant usage, potentially achievable if Starship's design meets or exceeds expectations. However, in more conserved estimates, where up to 20 flights may be required, the challenge becomes significantly more complex. Conducting 20 tanker flights within a tight timeline mission demands a high level of operational capability and reliability from SpaceX. Each additional flight introduces more opportunities for delays or failures, which could jeopardize the entire mission. Despite these challenges, SpaceX's strategy of rapid reuse is designed to mitigate the risks associated with a higher number of tanker flights. Starship and its booster Super Heavy are being developed with rapid turnaround times in mind, aiming for a level of reusability that far surpasses any current space vehicle. If SpaceX can achieve its goal of launching and landing the same Starship multiple times within days or even hours, the logistical burden of multiple tanker flights becomes more manageable. For example, in a scenario where 20 flights are required, SpaceX's vision of quick reusability could allow for a launch every few days, significantly reducing the time and cost associated with each mission. Moreover, the economics of SpaceX's reusable launch system are designed to accommodate frequent flights without a proportional increase in cost. The key advantage of this approach is that the cost of propellant, already relatively low, does not scale significantly with the number of flights. Instead, the focus shifts to the efficiency of launch operations, where SpaceX has already demonstrated considerable proficiency with its Falcon 9 program. The ability to launch multiple Starship flights in quick succession could make even a high number of tanker flights feasible, both technically and financially. In the past, at the time the contract for HLS was awarded, competing bidders Blue Origin noted that according to SpaceX's data for Starship, an HLS variant of the vehicle would require the launch of 15 other Starship vehicles to get it to the moon. The first of these would be another modified Starship designed to be an orbiting fuel depot. It would then be followed by 14 further tanker Starship flights, which would only transfer up to 100 tons of propellant per flight for transfer to the fuel depot. Only after these flights had been performed would Starship HLS be launched, and it would have to rendezvous with the fuel depot and transfer the majority of propellants, approximately 1,200 tons, from the depot to its tanks to be able to boost itself to the moon and then break itself into lunar orbit. Despite such claims being made based on SpaceX's figures, Elon Musk poo-pooed them, claiming all such refueling could be done in four to eight flights, not 16. Moreover, as of April 2024, in a public address to all company employees, Elon reaffirmed that you only need five to six refueling missions for a trip to Mars. You need about, about five or six uh, refilling missions for every one mission that goes to Mars. Yes, it's even more ambitious than we thought, isn't it? But Elon Musk has his own calculations, and SpaceX can achieve this with Starship variants that can have extended or even expanded fuel tank volumes. Elon also promised, next year we're aiming to demonstrate ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer. It's hard to make this not look a little bit naughty, uh, because its two ships are connected and doing a fluid transfer. On the other hand, NASA understood that it was accepting a degree of risk when it selected Starship as its solitary lunar lander design for Artemis 3 and 4. In the HLS source selection statement, Kathy Luters, the former leader of the defunct Human Exploration and Operations Mission Directorate, wrote, I acknowledge the immense complexity and heightened risk associated with a very high number of events required to execute the front end of SpaceX's mission, and this complexity largely translates into increased risk of operational schedule delays. However, the only alternatives were an overweight Dianetics lander and a Blue Origin lander, which would need a substantial redesign to achieve NASA's long-term goal of landing four astronauts on the moon. In this context, Starship had a significant upside as it far exceeded the HLS performance requirements. SpaceX claimed that it could deliver 100 tons of cargo to the lunar surface, which would reduce the operating costs of the Artemis Base Camp. In addition, SpaceX's $2.9 billion bid was half the price of its competitors' landers, since the company could offset Starship's development costs by also utilizing it to launch satellites. Over the past year, SpaceX and NASA have made noteworthy progress with the development of HLS Starship. The four test flights demonstrate that SpaceX is learning dozens of lessons from each mission and gradually improving the rocket's reliability. 
In February, NASA and SpaceX completed over 200 tests of the docking system, which will mate HLS Starship to Orion in lunar orbit. Leaked renderings demonstrate that the HLS team is factoring all of these test results into a more robust and capable design for the lander. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.